2,000 years ago, Jesus was walking with his disciples and asked them a seemingly innocent question. Who do the people say that I am? After they share the latest rumors, Jesus turns the question on his disciples. But who do you say that I am? In this video, I'll share the answer the disciples recorded in the Bible and challenge you to answer for yourself, who do you say that I am? Let's begin with the basic details of Jesus' life, which are affirmed by Christians and secular historians alike. Jesus was a man born around 4 BC in the town of Bethlehem, just south of the modern day Jerusalem. He was the son of Mary and Joseph and an heir to the throne of David from the tribe of Judah. Jesus grew up in the region of Galilee at a time when the people of Israel were oppressed by Rome. At 30 years of age, Jesus began his ministry as a rabbi and a traveling preacher. After three short years, corrupt Jewish leaders accused Jesus of insurrection, and he was crucified on a Roman cross at the age of 33. These facts make clear that Jesus was a unique man in history who had an unparalleled impact on history, but... Is the story of Jesus recorded in the Bible a true history? Now, I can't cover every challenge to that question, but I can say that for Christians, the answer is yes. And the Apostles' Creed offers us a good framework for presenting what the early disciples accepted as true about Jesus. The first line of the Creed reads, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. This confession affirms Jesus' divine nature as the second person of the Trinity, his relationship to the Father as the only begotten Son, and his role as Messiah. Regarding Jesus' divine nature, the disciple John affirms that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Regarding Jesus' role as Messiah, which means Christ or Anointed One, the disciple Luke recorded for us the story of angels sent by God to announce the birth of Jesus, a baby born to become Savior, Messiah, and King. The next line of the Creed confesses the early Christian belief that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. This miracle was accepted as true by the disciples in part because it was promised by Yahweh 700 years in advance. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed, Yahweh himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Luke records the fulfillment of this promise through Mary, a young virgin, who was chosen by God to give birth to Jesus. The next line of the creed affirms the disciples' belief that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Here again, this event was promised by Yahweh 700 years ahead of time through his prophet Isaiah. The Messiah, we are told, would suffer and redeem the sin of humanity. Luke recounts for us, Jesus himself claimed to fulfill Isaiah's prophecy, yet none of his disciples understood it or even believed it at the time. After Jesus was arrested, John tells us it became clear that Jesus was the suffering servant of God. Finally, the creed affirms the Christian belief that Jesus' death was not the end. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and will someday come again to judge the living and the dead. Here again, Luke records for us the promise Jesus made before his own death that, like Jonah in the belly of the whale, he would be in the grave three days before coming back to life. And John reminds us why this event represents the heartbeat of the Christian faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As you consider the story of Jesus recorded in the Bible and summarized by the Apostles' Creed, think back to Jesus' conversation with his disciples. It's not enough to know what the disciples say about Jesus. Every person must find their own answer to the question, who do you say that I am? So what do you say? Is Jesus a liar? Is he a lunatic? A legend? Or is Jesus truly Lord?